suspected in the burning of the Wentworth Castle. Read all about it. Fire at sea, boys. It's terrible. Victor, 400 lives lost in accidental burning of Wentworth Castle. Victor, wait, it's next week. Millionaire shipping magnet, Cyrus P. Wentworth, suspected in ship explosion. Wait, it's next week. Just stop. All my life, I'll see those poor people struggling in the water, drowning. But it wasn't your fault. But it was my ship. My company's investigation absolves you completely of all blame. Now then, if you'll be good enough to sign this paper, and we can have it witnessed. Yes, sir? I want you to witness my signature. This is Victor Martin, our attorney. Martin, meet Mr. Baldwin of the Mercantile Marine Insurance Company. How do you do, Baldwin? Here's the check, Mr. Wentworth. And if I can be of further service, please call on me. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. Anything else, sir? You read the changes in the will? Oh, yes. I have it with me. Clause 9 is the important one. Everything goes to your daughter, Cynthia. It's another problem off my mind. I hope you'll pardon my mentioning this, Mr. Wentworth, but you've been acting very curiously lately. Well, now this will. Well, what? Can a man make his will? Of course, but if you're thinking of destroying yourself... Forget about it. Why should I want to commit suicide? Well, your ship burning and all. I suppose it's been preying on your mind. But I'm not fool enough to kill myself over it. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I suppose you'll be uh, going off to your mountain lodge? Not yet. Why not? You mean that matter of the million and a half in bonds? Yes, that's on my conscience, too. I advised you against accepting that shipment. I know it. It's the only shady thing I ever did in my life. Then you'd better go before the Maritime Commission tomorrow and clear the whole thing up. Vic, are you crazy? No, it's the only thing to do. But they'll immediately accuse me of sabotaging my own ship. You'll have to take that chance. I advised you against it when you first asked me about it. And now I advise you to go before the Commission. Don't conceal a thing. I'll do it. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you in the first place. It'll come out all right. I'll see you in the morning. We'll go before the commission together. Well, good day, Mr. Fleming. Well, how do you do, Mr. Martin? How's Dick? Fine, thank you. And yourself? Never better. Well, could I see Mr. Wentworth? Well, I'll see. Mr. Wentworth, Mr. Fleming Sr. is here. Send him in. Yes, sir. You go in, please. Thank you. Hello, Cyrus. So you've come to gloat over me because one of my ships went down. Oh, you're wrong again, Cyrus. I came to offer you my sympathy and my help. I don't need your sympathy, and I can't conceive of any help you could offer. Then why can't you see that the consolidation of our two shipping lines would be of benefit to both of us? Get this, Fleming. I'll see my ships all burn before I'll put up with you. All right, all right. What about our kids? And if you think that you can worm your way into my business through a family marriage, you've got another guest coming. Yeah, but my boy has no part. You've never done anything in your life, Fleming, without an ulterior motive. All I ask you to do is to keep your office of consolidation away from here and to keep your boy away from my girl. Hello, Mr. Fleming. Hello, Miss Reed. Can I see Mr. W? Well, I think so. Your father's in there. Dad? Yes. Cyrus, you're a hard-headed, stubborn old fool. Well, Dick. Hello, Dad. What are you doing here? 
Oh, I came to offer old Cyrus my condolences. I can just imagine how you made out. And if you're calling on him about what I think you are, I hope you get a better reception. Don't worry about me, Dad. I can shout, too. It's about Cynthia, isn't it? That's right. She's waiting at the truck for me. Regardless of the outcome in there, we're going to get married, even if we have to run away to do it. Well, at least you have my blessing, son. Thank Dad. I'm sorry, but he won't see you. He won't, eh? Mr. Wentworth, I have something important to tell you. Your father's too old to throw out of here, but you're not. Now, Get out. Wait a minute, Mr. Wentworth. I came here to discuss something. I'm not interested. All right, I'll put it this way. I want to marry Cynthia. No, that's clear, isn't it? Hardly. What's your objection to me? Your father. My father isn't marrying Cynthia. Neither is his son. Oh, Mr. Fleming, I'm Hello. glad to see you. How are you, Matthews? All right, Mr. Reed, here we go. Sorry to hear about the ship. Yeah, that was yeah, terrible. Thing. Get married. Well, it's not so much the loss of the ship as the loss of lives. There's nothing genuine in you. My father... I wonder who that could be. <laughs> My boy, bearding the lion in his den. Try marrying her against my will, and I'll break you in two sooner or later. We're not going to let you browbeat us. Cynthia and I have gone over this very carefully, and there's nothing you can do to stop us. Oh, isn't there? The conversation was evidently in reference to his daughter. Get out. I think I'll wait for the outcome. I will convince you that you can't get away with this sort of thing in this day and age. Cyrus! He's dead. Did you call the police? No, it just happened. You gentlemen stay here. Bobby, what do you have? Same as you. Martini, please. Well, what's up? Bobby, I want you to forget you're a newspaper woman for once. You're going to do a favor for me. Mm-hmm. What's it this time? Can you keep a secret? Secret? Now I know it's a story. What is it? Oh, please, Bobby, we need your help. We? Yes, Dick and I. Oh, I get it. So you're going to be married. Oh, I'll give you a swell break in the paper. Oh, but I don't want you to print anything about it, at, at least until it's all over. That's why I called you. You're going along with us. You mean you want me to stand up with you? Well, always a bridesmaid. When do we start? As soon as I hear from Dick, he, he's up with Father now, telling him about it. Even if we can get Father's consent, we're going to do it anyway. An elopement! Oh, boy, what a spread that'll be. But my paper gets the story exclusive. It's a deal. <laughs> what was telephone call for you? Keep your fingers crossed. What's the damage? Let's see, that will be uh, four dollars. What'd she do, buy the place? No, that's the price, a uh, dollar a cocktail. Well, I better take the pearl, keep the change. Thank you. Bobby. Oh, Cynthia, look, why, what's the matter? It's about father, something's happened. Calling Mr. Wagner. Calling Mr. Wagner. Any trace of the gun, Mike? Not yet, Cap. Did you find anything, Blake? No. What's new, Doc? Died almost instantly, a bullet in the heart. Job for the coroner. Sure, sure, open and shut case. This is one time I got the murderer dead to rights. What time did you say that Fleming boy arrived? Ten past six. You sure of that? Absolutely, everybody else had left. Were you here then? Yes. That cinches it. If you mean my son, he didn't do it. You're the boy's father, aren't you? Yes. Well, we can't take your word for it. The evidence proves it. You said you heard loud voices. Yes. Where were you when you heard the shot? I was out there. I was just about to leave. And your son thought you were out there? No, he thought I had gone. Where would he be now? Well, I don't know. You don't seem very certain about that. You haven't got an appointment to meet him later, have you? No. What were you and your son doing here? Well, I came here to offer my condolences to Mr. Wentworth over the loss of his ship. What was the boy doing here? He came to ask Mr. Wentworth's permission to... to marry his daughter. Oh, that's it. They had a quarrel and the kid killed him. That's all I want to know. Blake. Yes, Chief. Did you phone him and have him broadcast that kid's description? Yes. Because I'm going to have him pick... Mr. Fleming, what is it? My dear, your father... What's happened to oh, father? Please, you must be brave. Please. 
Who are you? She's Cynthia Wentworth. Quiet, Logan. I'm Cynthia Wentworth. Who are you? Captain Street of the Homicide Squad. Homicide Squad? Yeah, where's Dick Fleming? Dick? Isn't he here? What's happened? Please don't tell Cynthia. me. Don't butt in. All right, Bill. Bobby, it... Oh, Cynthia, darling. Bobby, it... It's something terrible, isn't it? Oh... Calling all cars, calling all cars. General broadcast to all stations. Be on the watch for Richard Fleming, about 22, 5 foot 8, light complexion, brown hair, wearing light sport clothes. Was last seen in the vicinity of the Wentworth building. He's wanted for murder. Don't take any chances. He may be armed and dangerous. That is all. Fleming, aren't you? That's right. You're under arrest for murder. I won't advise you. Anything you say may be used against you. Mike, look the car over. Yeah. But you must. There's nothing more important than this. Oh, you've got to do it. Yes. All right, I'll get it. Bye. Listen, Cynthia. Oh, Mr. Uh, Matthews. I was wondering if I could have the passenger list on the boat for my paper. Of course. Thank you. Cynthia, I've got some wonderful news for you. James Lee Wong, the famous Chinese detective, is going to be special investigator on the case. I've worked with him before, honey, and you've got nothing to worry about. He's terrific. Oh, good. Thank you, Bobby. Here you are. Oh, thank you. I'll keep in touch with you, honey. Casey, Captain Street in? Now, wait a minute, Miss Logan. You're not going to get past me this time. Captain Street gave strict orders no one's going in. Okay, okay. Well, I wouldn't think of going in without your permission. What's up? They picked up the Fleming lad for the murder of old man Wentworth. The captain's got him in there now. Oh, boy, this is worth waiting for. How many times do I have to tell you I didn't do it? Ah. Everybody knows that you and your father were enemies of Wentworth. That you had a quarrel with Wentworth because he wouldn't let you marry his daughter, is that right? Suppose it is. That still doesn't mean I killed him. No, but you were the last one with him when he was killed. We can establish that. Yeah, and why didn't you take the elevator down? Elevator? Well, it was only on the second floor. It was after hours. I didn't think anything of walking down. Ah, you won't hold water. Why didn't you leave for the outer office? Mr. Wentworth showed me to the hall. Did you know your father was waiting? No. Why don't you come clean, kid, and I'll do all I can to help you. I don't want your help. I'm innocent, I tell you. So you're innocent. I'm with you there. How are you going to prove your innocence? I don't know. What would you do with a gun? Gun? I didn't have a gun. What about this permit issued to you six months ago? Oh, the, we had a series of robberies in our neighborhood, and I was granted a permit at the time. I forgot about that. It's been in my study desk at home. I never used it. Then the gun should still be there. That's correct. What would you think if I told you I had a man checking that the gun is gone? Gone? Look, your own father admits that you were having a violent quarrel with Wentworth at the time of the shooting. Now, if you didn't kill him, you know who did. I don't know anything about it. Did you shoot him in self-defense? No. Kill him in a fit of insanity? I didn't shoot him, I tell you. Look, son, don't you see? We've established a motive. We've established the fact that you were with Wentworth at the time he was killed. You haven't got a leg to stand on. Now, why don't you make a complete confession? I didn't do it. Lock him up, boys. Have you printed anything yet? No, I'm giving you a break, Phil. I'm holding out until I get all the facts. Well, it's lucky for you, because this is one case I've washed up in a hurry. Well, yeah, well, what's the story? Now, this is the way it ought to be printed. Take it down. Two hours after Cyrus P. Wentworth, well-known shipping magnate, was found shot to death in his office, Captain William Street of the Homicide Squad, acting with lightning-like speed, arrested and charged with first-degree murder, the socially prominent son of Paul Fleming. 
long-standing enemy of the Wentworth interests. Well, you haven't taken anything down. Oh, I've got the most important part, the lightning-like speed of Captain Street. Now, look, this case is closed. I've got that kid dead to rights. Mr. Wong, I hope I'm not intruding. Wong, what's brought you here? I phoned him. Are you butting into my business again? Sure. I knew you'd arrested the wrong man. You always do. Now, you listen I to me. I just thought I'd like to check into a few details, Treat. You don't mind, I'm sure. You're wasting your time, Wong. Well, time is cheap for those who have it to spend. Okay. If you can prove to this nosy reporter that I'm right. Uh, did you get the list? Yes. What list? I asked Miss Logan to get me a list of the passengers who were on the Wentworth Castle when she was burned. Say, you haven't got a notion that the burning of the Wentworth Castle had anything to do with that Fleming kid killing Wentworth, have you? Well, I've no preconceived notions. That's more than I can say for you, Bill. Hmm, interesting. What's interesting? A number of the passengers were Chinese. That'll bear investigation, Street. Why? Well, you know the burning of the ship was rather suspicious in the first place. It may be that the relatives of those who were lost have an idea of revenge. Oh, for the love of Mike. You mean to tell me that I've got the relatives of 400 drowned people as suspects? <laughs> I'm afraid so, Street. At any rate, it won't hurt to investigate this list. Have at it. Is your car here? Yes, downstairs. Where can I take you? Uh, may I borrow Miss Logan? You can have her for keeps. <laughs> when we get through with a case, the Homicide Squad will be the used car squad. Yes, Captain. Have Blake follow Mr. Wong and Miss Logan. I don't want anything to happen to Mr. Wong. Is this the place? No. But you stay here and wait for me. I'll be back in a few minutes. It's Logan. here on personal business or in his official capacity? I am here on behalf of the police. of the Wentworth Castle. An unfortunate disaster. Do you recognize the names of any of our countrymen on this list? One, Kai Ling, the most trusted member of our Tong. I have no desire to pry into the affairs of the Tong. But I would like to know the reason of his journey. He was on a secret mission for the town. And what was the nature of his mission? Kai Ling was bringing a million and a half in gold bonds from Havana. Why? Conditions in our country are such that we have to bring the town funds to this country for safekeeping. It had to be done secretly to avoid international complications. So they were being smuggled in aboard the Wentworth Castle. Mm, yes. But Kai Ling was amongst the survivors. So of course you have the bonds. No, Kai Ling has disappeared. You know, of course, that the owner of the Wentworth Castle is dead. No member of this town is guilty of such a deed. And no one else had any idea of the existence of the bonds? No one else, unless perhaps a rival town, but we can't be sure. No. 
thank you. Gee, I'm glad you're back. Get that car, Tom. What is it? No, it's nothing. What is this, a Tom there? Might be. Well, get in, we'll follow them. Not necessary, the police are after them. Well, come on, we're going to the receiving hospital. This one, it. You might have used a red hot poker. <laughs> this is a ridiculous fuss over a simple flesh wound. Now, never mind. We're not going to take any chances of infection. You've got to have at least one intelligent detective working on the case. How is it, Doc? Oh, just a flesh wound. Now keep this in the sling for uh, three days. Very well. All right, Wong. Who shot you? Could have been an accident. Did I ask you? All right, who did it? I don't know. Now, look, Wong. I had Blake follow you. He saw that guy pull up in that black car and take a shot at you, and he chased him. Well, then you know what happened. Who was it? I don't know. The car was wrecked, and when he got there, there was nobody in it. It must have been a phantom. Doesn't make any difference who it was. The next time you get any wild ideas like this and don't tip me off, there's going to be trouble. I don't need you on this case, but I might need you on a future one. So you still think you've solved it, huh? Yes, I do. Young Fleming didn't. And if he didn't, I'll eat my hat. I'll see that you do. Uh... Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Come again. I hope not. Miss Reed, I'll see you all callers. Well, my views, Mr. Fleming. I'm very happy to know that you've taken over the business. Well, thanks. Too bad we couldn't have married before Cyrus died. Yes, isn't it a pity? We're going to expect you to carry on as usual, Matthews. Thanks. It's an honor to be associated with you. By the way, I'd like to have a digest of the last six months' business. Yes, sir. I'll tend to it right away. So that's where you put it. 
I knew I saw it on the floor. Be rather awkward for you if the police knew. It would be awkward for my son. He was in here just before Cyrus committed suicide. Before? Yes. And it was suicide, Matthews. It could have been. I could swear it was uh, for a consideration. How much? It should be worth a partnership and $25,000. Is the deal? Who's in there? Why, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Fleming. Is it? Oh, Captain Street. Hello, Mr. Fleming. Special Investigator Wong. This is the Fleming kid's father. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Wong? I've been told that you're going to try to clear my son. Who told you that? Miss Logan, a friend of my son's fiance. Oh, Wentworth's daughter, huh? You know, old man Wentworth didn't sanction this thing. Drove the kid to desperation. Too bad you had to hear the argument. What did Wentworth say that made the kid shoot him? How could I be of service? Well, first of all, we'd like to know what you're doing in this office. Well, Miss Wentworth asked me to take over her father's business. Been waiting a long time for that, haven't you? Yes, but I didn't commit murder to get my wish. So you had your son do it, isn't that right? I was a business rival of Mr. Wentworth, but I was not his enemy. Of course not. I understand that you were amongst the first to find the body. Now, just where was it? I, I should say, about here. Oh. Any signs of violence or a struggle? No. You read the police report, Wong? Yes, but things can be rearranged, you know. By any chance, was there any evidence of that? No, I stayed here until the police came and nothing was disturbed. I can vouch for that. And so neither of you left the room? No, sir. Were you out there? Yes, sir. Hear loud voices? Yes. You see these two men threaten each other? I couldn't see them. The door was closed. You know, your boss left a lot of enemies. Oh, no, a lot of friends. Would you say that this man and his son were friends? Yes, I would. What would Wentworth say to that statement? Well, Mr. Wentworth didn't consider a competitor a friend. Oh, bitter against him, huh? Particularly his biggest competitor hated him. And this man and his son hated Wentworth. I couldn't say as to that. But you would say that the boy killed him? No, on the contrary. Who did? I couldn't tell you. Did you say that he was a suicide? Well, he was quite despondent, sir. You've been with this office a long time, haven't yes, you? Yes, sir. Probably mentioned in the will. Well, I wouldn't know, sir. Who would? His attorney, Mr. Martin. Suicide clause in that insurance contract would cancel it, wouldn't it? I dare say. So you took the trouble to hide the gun? Oh, no, sir. Here's the list, Mr. Wong. Uh, what list? What do you care? You caught the killer, didn't you? Uh, I asked the names of all the callers in the office yesterday. A man named Ludlow and a countryman of mine named Lem Howe. I suppose you saw them. Lem was Mr. Wentworth's personal servant. Ludlow was discharged chauffeur. Meaning nothing. You say he was discharged? Yes, sir. He came to plead for his job back. What time was that? Early in the day, sir. Shall we go, Street? Thank you very much, sir. Wong, they're trying to clear that kid. I'll make you eat your hat yet. Yeah. Find him on the fire escape, Chief. Yeah, who are you? Chief of police. Why, he's the Wentworth chauffeur. What were you doing on the fire escape? Parking my car. Hard to get along with, huh? No, I just don't get chummy with strangers. That's so? Ever seen one of those? Seen a lot of them, haven't you? Don't like cops at all. You better start talking or I'll lock you up. What for? Prowling. Then why were you discharged? Oh, I was a bad, bad boy. I got drunk. And when was that? A month ago. Are you looking for trouble? No. I'm just trying to find some clue to help the Fleming boy. Oh. What's your interest in him? I'm Miss Cynthia's chauffeur now. Oh, aced yourself right back in again, huh? All right, you can go. But don't leave town. Tail him. Right. Tough customer, that one. Oh, I never did like him. I wish Cynthia hadn't hired him. I'm going to make her fire. Oh, why don't you mind your own business? You're always butting into things that don't concern you. You sure can stand a lot of rough talk. The talk is big enough. Uh, can I drop you any place, Wong? Oh, yeah. I know where you can drop me. Yeah, so do I on your head. Oh, no, Fleming. It's gone.
I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Wong. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Cynthia told me you were on the case. A very curious case, Mr. Martin. Dick is incapable of committing murder. I quite agree with you. Is there anybody else that you suspect? I know of no one to suspect. I wish I did for Dick's sake. You were very close to Mr. Wentworth, weren't you? Closer than anyone. He gave me my start. I owe him whatever success I've had. You saw him shortly before his death, didn't you? Within the very hour. Was anything said at that time that might help us? No. Matter of his insurance policies on the ill-fated ship. But I believe they're going to be paid. They have. He's been completely exonerated. Then he obviously wasn't worrying about that. He had been under a strain ever since the disaster. In fact, I was afraid that he contemplated doing away with himself. Really? Why? Because I just made out a new will, which he signed then, seeming anxious to get it over with. Suicide? Might be, but... But then there's the matter of the gun. He could hardly dispose of that if he had a bullet in his heart. Might not someone else have taken it to conceal that it was suicide? I see what you mean. The boy, for instance. Uh, perhaps thinking of the girl. <laughs> Heavens, no. Put himself on a spot? I doubt if any man is capable of that much chivalry. It's true, isn't it, that the company was in rather low water, even before the Wentworth Castle was burned? I thought no one outside knew that. Well, I gather that from the stock market quotations. Conditions are not entirely due to the times. In fact, large sums of money have been disappearing from the company funds. Oh. And who knew that besides you and Mr. Wentworth? Matthews. He had access to the funds? Yes, but he's been tireless in his efforts to stop the leak. Hmm. I can quite understand that. Oh, I'm reluctant to believe. Matthews was in the same room with Fleming when the shot occurred. But Fleming may have turned his back just for the moment that it took to open the door and fire the shot. With Matthews in the same room? If you'll send for your secretary, I'll give you a demonstration. Oh, certainly. Yes, sir. Miss Wilson, this is Mr. Wong. How do you do? How do you do? If you'll sit down, please. If you don't mind, I'm going to try a little experiment with these two coins. Now, it's not going to hurt you. Now, just close your eyes, and I'll snap these two coins. In front of your head, behind your head, and over your head. And you tell me where the sound comes from. All now, right. Are your eyes closed? In back of my head. In front. Still in front. Thank you very much. Well, was I right? Not once. Was there something wrong with me? Well, hardly. <laughs> that certainly is one for the book. I wonder. Maybe Dick... W so he was in the room with Mr. Wentworth. I don't know, but I'll make him tell. I don't say a word about the coin trick. We may need that in the defense. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin.
Great Scott, it's you, Mr. Wong. Didn't I see someone at the fire escape? You did. It was someone who'd been opening the safe. The safe? Did you recognize him? It was too dark. Well, we'd better call the police. No, I don't believe I would if I were you. But we can't afford to overlook a single clue. Dick's case is getting hopeless. I know. But please don't lose confidence in me. I assure you, Miss Wentworth, we are not going to lose your case. Thank you, Mr. Wong. It's funny he didn't make an effort to stop him. Look here, Cynthia. I don't like this prowling around at night. I might have put a bullet through it. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. After all I've done for you, you might at least show a little gratitude. Oh, you're not pulling any wool over my eyes, Bill Street. You're up to one of your tricks, and I'm going to find out what it is if I have to camp here all night. No, why don't you leave me alone? I told you a thousand times I'm not holding out any news stories on you. Well, then where's Wong? How do I know? I'm not his mother. Street, you got blood low? Yeah. You want him? Yes, I'd like to talk to him. Blake, bring Ludlow in. So you were holding out on me, huh? Well, what is this about Ludlow? Come on, give. Tell me. All right, all right. So my men did pick him up, but I haven't got a thing on him. Oh, don't lie on me. Now, wait a minute. This female reporter's driving me batty. Look, sweetheart, Mr. Wong and I crave secrecy. We want to be alone. I don't get the hint. You don't get the hint. Logan, one of these days, I'm going to get my hands on that lily white neck of yours and... Here he is, Chief. We meet again, Mr. Ludlow. The pleasure's all yours. Nice of your boys to park their car right underneath my fire escape. Do you room and board on that fire escape? Oh, now, Miss Logan, why be your usual sweet, nasty self? Anytime you want a character reference, just come to me. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> you see, we're both the same type. You write lies, and I tell them. Bill Street, are you going to stand for that? Sure. Well, sit down, Ludlow. Hmm. Thanks, Commissioner. I will. You know, you'd save us a great deal of trouble if you just answer one question. I'll answer anything you ask, but don't expect the truth. Well, I'm quite sure you could tell the truth just once, if you really tried. <laughs> you'd be a fool to believe anything I told you. You know who killed Wentworth. <laughs> what was on that piece of paper that you burned up? Now, who'd ever think that someday I'd be telling the truth? What name did you read on that piece of paper? I don't know nothing about nothing. You know, I can have you sent up for safe breaking. It was open when I got there. I'm afraid you forget that I was there. Oh, then you opened it. Oh, why, Mr. Wong. I'm quite serious about sending you up. And so am I. Now, get this. I didn't kill the old man, and I didn't see it done. And I ain't making any wild guesses as to who did it. If I find out, I'll give you the tip. The sooner you quit tailing me and interfering with me, the sooner you're gonna get that tip, and that's the truth. Ha, ha. Lock him up. No, no, Street. I think I'd let him go. You don't believe that crook, do you? Yes, I do. All right, get out of here. Thanks for the interview. Hope I didn't help you any. Right, Blake. I know what he's up to, Street, but I think we can anticipate it. Hey, have you got something up your sleeve? Well, there's an answer to every riddle, you know, and I think perhaps this is it. What is that? Ashes. Oh, look, we're trying to solve a murder, and you're carrying ashes around. Is that going to tell us who killed Wentworth? No, but it may be a clue as to the reason of the killing, and once we know that, we are very close to knowing the identity of the killer. We'll need some infrared film, Street. Well, you better use a photographic lab. Right. Well, what's infrared film for? To photograph the ashes, and I hope to bring out the writing on them. Well, but how? Look, dummy. Infrared film is sensitive to wavelengths of light beyond the human eye.
All right. Fascinating. Who, me? No, the other negative. And you look good, too, in the dark. anything wrong? Not yet. It's rather faint. There goes the clue. Well, I found one name. Kai Ling. He was one of the passengers. Yeah, yeah. We heard that before. Kai Ling. Let's make another negative. Well, why? We've got all we need. We have Kai Ling's name. James Lee Wong speaking. Have you a record of Kai Ling? I'd like his address, please. 19 Queen Street on the waterfront. Thank you. You want him? Yes. I'll pick him up myself. And don't phone your editor. I'll tip you off when. You make another negative and print of that, and don't let anybody see it but me. All right, Mr. Wong. Let's just see if some windows are open. Who, me? Yeah. I thought you newspaper gals were brave. Yeah, and I thought a man as big as you could break in a front door. Uh. Come on, brave heart. You stay out of my way and quit following me. It's me, it's me.
Logan. Bobby. What's the matter? See if you can find a light. This guy's cold. Doesn't work. Light that candle. Do you think it's Kai Ling? Just a minute. Is your name Kai Ling? How do I know who he is? Well, it's a story anyway. Bobby Logan discovered... Bobby Logan discovered nothing. I'll tell you when to print the story. Send me for if you were coming down here. But I'm not street, I'm coming up. Very funny. Afraid I gave Miss Logan rather a shock. Thanks. You're sure this is the right address that they gave us over the telephone? Yeah. Yeah. Kai Ling was a passenger in the Wedworth Castle. He lives here on the waterfront. I think he's in the smuggling business. You mean he was in the smuggling huh? business? Come on. Exhibit A. Very old dynasty. Who, this guy? Very strange thing, the street, that the rest of the house should be empty while this room is elaborately furnished. He must have been a person of considerable importance. Yeah, and he had something important or they wouldn't have murdered him. Turn his head so that we can see his face. He's been dead for some days. You know, this is the right address that they gave us. This must be Kai Ling. Bell Street, what do you mean leaving me downstairs unconscious? That's nothing new. Oh, that's Lim Howe, the missing Wentworth servant. How do you know? Oh, I've seen him lots of times. 
He killed Wentworth and then committed suicide. Sure, stabbed himself in the back. You're still unconscious. Street, do you suppose that Kai Ling and Lem Hao are one and the same person? Bill! Where'd you get that stuff? I phoned Miss Wentworth and she sent it. You sure you didn't phone her? Bill Street, of course I didn't. You know, you made me a promise. Well, I kept it. This story breaks I'm out. I'm sorry, Street, but I'm afraid it's broken already. How could it? Well, you see, Miss Logan was with me when I telephoned Miss Wentworth. And she said it's too bad this story can't be published. It might influence public opinion in favor of Dick. And I'm afraid Miss Wentworth heard it. So you shouted, huh? Well, I didn't talk direct. Oh. Uh, Street? It's the same handwriting. Lem Howe and Kai Ling are one of the same person. We have something here. Yeah, a Chinese puzzle. Then Lem Howe did do it. Cynthia said that he and her father had an argument a short time ago. Quiet. Well, if this Lem Howe... I've had as much right as this discussion as you have. Will you be quiet? Well, I found the corpse, didn't I? All right, all right. Finish what you're going to say, will you? Well, I did finish. It's simple. Sure, you're simple. He shot Wentworth and then killed himself. Just stabbed himself in the back, huh? Well, well I'm an Oriental would, wouldn't he? You know, commit Harry Harry or whatever you call it. Very hairy. Hello, Street speaking. What? Yeah. Okay. Suicide, huh? Come here, Wong. This is a pip. I had an autopsy performed. They found a bullet wound underneath the dagger. They traced the bullet through the body into the hip. And that bullet came from the same gun that killed Wentworth. Yeah? Miss Wentworth and Mr. Martin, shall I send them in? Wait a minute. Oh, that's swell. That's fine. Now you got that Wentworth gal on my neck. I get this, Bobby. This is strictly between us. If a word of this gets out, something's going to happen, and I'm not fooling. Okay, Bill. I'm not going to try and pin this on the Fleming kid. It's a little far-fetched that he'd commit a couple of murders the same day. But I am going to check on his whereabouts that morning, if only to protect him. Now listen, Dizzy. I'm going to leave you alone with him. I want you to get that information, and I'm not fooling. You understand? Yes. Casey, have Fleming brought up. Come in. Hello, Mark. Bobby, Cynthia, how are you? Have you found anything? A great deal. Well, that is good news. Whatever it is, don't delay. Anything to postpone the hearing. I've done my best, but I'm stymied by a mountain of circumstantial evidence. I can realize that. I'm afraid your servant, Lem Howe, is dead, Miss Wentworth. Lem? Dead? It may have a bearing on the case. He was found in an old house in the Chinese quarter. He'd been murdered. Murdered? It must be someone who's determined to destroy the entire household. In heaven's name, Captain, don't let this girl go around without a bodyguard. You're right. I'll arrange for one. But no one... And fire that chauffeur. It gives me the chills. I haven't seen him for 24 hours. I guess he's fired himself. Why'd you take him back? He promised to stay sober and to help Dick. And two, he said I could use a bodyguard. Great guns. I'd rather have a rattlesnake following me. Oh, Dick. Cynthia. I'm going to leave you alone for a quarter of an hour. No one will bother you. Come on, Wong. Are you all right? Of course I am, my darling. Dick, you can come clean on something now. I've got to know. It may be a chance of proving your innocence. If you were in that office when the shot was fired, you've got to say so. If I was, I would have seen the killer. No, you might only have heard the shot. Well, I certainly would have known where it came from. Not necessarily, as Wong can demonstrate. I know, I've seen him do it. You were there, weren't you? Yes. I was stunned. The outer hall door had been opened by Mr. Wentworth when he asked me to leave. When he fell at my feet, I turned into the hall and ran to intercept whoever had done it. When I returned, unsuccessful, I saw people running into the outer office and I knew at once I'd be accused. So I beat it for home. If I tell that to the court, the walls and all would fall down on top of me. If you'd only told me this before, we might have had something to go on. The open door, fingerprints, concentrate. Can't you remember having seen someone? 
But I didn't see anybody. Dick, where were you before you went to the Wentworth office? That morning, I took Cynthia to get a good view of the burnt ship. Lem was there. He'd lost a cousin or somebody. Then I drove Cynthia to the truck, and I took Lem into Chinatown. Chinatown? Oh, Dick! Well, so what? You took Lem to Chinatown, and no one's seen in our lives since. Oh, shh. The big lug. It's a frame-up. Dick, you're going to escape. Bobby. Go out that door. My car's in the alley and the keys are in it. Take Cynthia with you and go on home. No one will ever look for you there. Stop. Do you want him to hang himself completely? He'll give us more time. Dick, if you're going through with this mad impulse, wait till I'm out. I'd be disbarred if I were a witness to it. Well, then go on. All right. Go on, kids. Hurry up. I'll meet you later. Go on. Nice work, baby. Nice work. I got just what I wanted, just what I wanted. Wonder what happened to that mic. Oh, I guess somebody tripped over it. Where'd they go? Well, they finished and left. That's so? <laughs> you ought to have your head examined. That's been open all the time. You heard everything? Sure. And we're going to join him for tea later, as soon as he digs up that gun. Why, you big bad boo! Oh, I've got the Fleming place covered. Anybody can get in, but nobody can get out. What? Oh, no, you don't. Nothing but a divorce can separate us now. We'd have to get married to get a divorce, and I wouldn't marry if you. If I were the last man on earth, I know. Sit down. Dick! You're out on bail? No, he's escaped. What? convicted yourself. I'm convicted as it is. The police, Martin, everyone thinks I haven't a chance. Why shouldn't I run away? Well, don't you see? You're confessing your guilt. What's the difference? Everybody thinks I'm guilty. You've got to get me out of here. You've got to get a plane for me. No, go back. I'm not a quitter, but I haven't anything to fight with. I can't fight locked in a stinking jail. Go back, son. You won't help. No. You think I did it too, don't you, Dad? No, don't say that to me. Dick, please. It was Bobby's idea to, to give Wong more time. You have nothing to fear, son. I can clear you. How? If it looks like a conviction, I'll tell the court who did it and how it was done. You know. Well, I thought he'd just as well if I were away when the trial opens. Have you the balance? No. I phoned you long before the banks closed. No more money for you, Matthews. Are you forgetting that what you did means your son's finish? They'll hang him. I'm not paying you anymore. Shall I call the police? I'll save you the trouble. See, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You're making a mistake. Could I have the Detective Bureau, please? Detective Bureau? You're making a terrible mistake, Gus Lemming. But I'd like to speak to Captain Street. Hello? Captain Street? Mrs. Fleming. Yes, Mr. Fleming. Captain, my son did not kill Cyrus Wentworth. If you'll come to my house, I'll tell you who did it. Hello. Hello, Mrs. 
Fleming. Hello. I heard a shot. A shot? Where's the car? In the alley. Shot Fleming. Anybody leave? No, they're all in there. How is he? Bad wound, but it's not fatal. Fleming, this is Captain Street. What were you trying to tell me on the phone? I killed Sarah Wentworth. Ted, you don't know what you're saying. All right, I'm listening. Matthew saw me do it. I've had to pay him for his silence. Oh, so he shot you. Well, just relax. The doc will be here in a minute. Dad, you're not telling the truth. He's only trying to protect me. Take it easy, kid. Just hold everything. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, you heard what he said? Yes. Did you see him kill Wentworth? No. What do you mean, no? Well, he might have, I don't know. But I did see him hide the gun. So you used that to blackmail him, huh? That's all I want to know. Well, that eliminates the Fleming kid. And pins it on the father. I overheard your very fine gesture, Mr. Fleming. Quite unnecessary. Mr. Ludlow. Well, the pleasure is... is still mine. Uh, uh. You got past me in the garden, didn't you? But fortunately for Mr. Fleming, your aim was not as good as when you killed Kyle Ing and Mr. Wentworth. I killed Wentworth? Of course you did. From across the hall, through the open door, and then you threw the gun into the room. And you hoped to implicate young Fleming. No, oh, you're making that up out of your head. Am I? And I suppose I'm imagining that you had to destroy the agreement between Kyle Ing and Wentworth. What agreement? That piece of paper that you were burning in the office that night. Your name was on it. My name was not. Your name was on it as a witness. It wasn't was it? not. That's right. Wentworth showed me the paper. It was his signature. Why, you double crossing? There's your man, Street. Take a mic. So you were partners. Well, I really am surprised that a professional like you would team up with an amateur like this. Here's the Garden Street. I traced it to him. And here's the reproduction of the burned agreement with Martin's signature on it. I'm sorry I had to hold that out on you, but... <laughs> There's only one thing I regret. I know that you didn't kill me that night in Chinatown when you shot at me. Take him out, boys. Well, Street... We've done it again. Yeah, sure. Why, the first day in the office, I had this whole thing doped out. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs>